exercise uh, you will see you will see you will see I wrote one simple let's say exactly the same the slide so we will follow that one but uh, I ask you to develop the two table which one table called user and the other one is rule of user so I ask you to develop with the school of Kami. so you should import the school of Kami. if you don't have it you should install it okay then you need to uh, you need to create a user ID name username and email and password if you don't want to put email you can drop it but you need username of course then rule ID which has a rule and a rule name which has a part which has a relation foreign key to the table uh, I mean the table user table has a foreign key on the rule table so has a one to many relation between the rule to user okay for recapping I said you you have to create so you have to import of course uh, school alchemy then you have to create a uh, you have to create a object of the db db object then you can create a table based on that so you have to create a class then name of the object uh, name of the column and etc so at the beginning we'll let's to see what we can do here okay only i don't know how many of you you watch the video in the video i explain also about the this this page which also you have in the slide only more information uh, i will give you uh, when you have a one page it's better to separate the part which you need to replicate and is a let's say super 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 um, how to explain it's like a menu and footer in, in each page is replicating so you can do two way you can replicate those in each page the same result you will see or you can separate the top and bottom and put the content only in the middle so when you change the page the top and bottom is not changing so you are separating that part and you putting in one file and when you want to change something in the menu or a footer you can change in one place not in hundred place in your website so in this case we we say we have to separate our mockup we have to divide our mockup so i divided here in this part and this part to uh, as, a, as a menu as a footer and as a content so what you should do you should take your template which is HTML here I have also uh, then you have to see where is your where your content has to go so in the place which your content content has to go in the layout that is HTML, let's say or in the page number one which has a menu and footer also you should write in the place that you want to put your content you should write block content and block then block footer and end footer and footer you can write also here end content it's the same result only I wrote because sometimes uh, when you are starting your block you don't know where is finishing your block so uh, for myself I'm putting for my reference but you can add also block footer and put a block block content and block that's it and the, 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 in the another page which you wish to put your data there so your new data goes there you are not calling the, your base.html or layout.html or something else so you are 
calling with the render template this page. Clear this page. So in this page, you should write extend my page number one, which here, or is a layout based strategy and anything else. Put my content, I mean, my content starting from block content from here to here, and my footer starting from here to here. My, I, I put the footer also here, but you can take from here and cancel this footer, only to have, to show you it's possible to put many block in one page. Many block in one page, okay? So this is a way you can separate, I mean, uh, divide your uh, HTML page in many small block and in this case you have a flexibility to cancel and show each page, each part and anything else. Today I have the same. What I did is for a moment, forget about that exercise, only I would like to show you very fast how we can separate that part. So here I have one layout which has, if I render it, you will see only the top menu, button menu. I will, I will show you now, okay? One moment. I will come into this part to see it. what is this template. So layout, that is HTML, what is inside only? We want to see. So we say this one index. Please create one. Uh, normal Flask application and this activity can be done also for any type of template which may, sometimes you want to uh, download one template which you can use it as a free and you want to work on that so you don't need to create all the HTML by yourself okay <coughs> so index Render, of course, you need render template. You need here render template. You can do here layout. That's it. Only the, the things is I need also bootstrap. So I am using here bootstrap. So what you should do when you are taking the your template usually has some CSS, some image, something, a lot of things. Is coming with your template. So this template has CSS, uh, has Bootstrap CSS, and also I wrote some specific CSS for this. So I should download these CSS, and I have to copy the specific CSS. So first I go to the Bootstrap for. There is a two way to add Bootstrap. One way is using downloading the compiled CSS file. The second way is using the online version. Has advantage and disadvantage. Using online version is good because every time when the C uh, bootstrap is updating, you have update version. You don't need to update the, your file or, or your JS or other things. But has a disadvantage. When you are coding, you cannot have help or uh, other, let's say, helper in your page, in your pie chart. When you are writing, you should know every every class, what is the name, what it does, or what what uh, what you can do with those. So, has an advantage and disadvantage. You have to do trade off, and you see which one you you wish to use. If you use online, always you have to see this page, and scroll down and check what is happening, like. If you want to show some some uh, alert here, we can say alert. There is alert, and it's showing the alert. Some people ask me how we can put the alert here. Yes, of course you can use it if you use the Bootstrap, and you can copy this line, and you can put in your code, and you can put your data here. And it show, will show this one. Or if you want to show the red one, which today we will use it, the red one. And also maybe green one, if we reach. Okay? So, now I would like to download 
the bootstrap from here I download I will put in the place near to my files which is this one I guess I can yes is here inside the static folder a static folder is open but if you wish to put in another folder name you have to open by flask application with the URL underscore four with the name of the folder name of the file you remember I told you last time I put in the static so I go inside I extract it there is a two file this one and this one I will put inside the my static folder then I will I can remove these two that's ah, okay <coughs> this two. that's it so I have a file here and here okay the static folder so if I go to my file I will see here there is also main.css which I is some lines I will show you I did it in the past before lesson so is this one and uh, only to clarify I will upload this exercise which I solve it you can see excess in the four every place I written what is the this is for the first one this is for the second one so I will upload tomorrow afternoon okay because we have tomorrow again morning we have a lesson okay anyhow uh, I come here I have, uh, I copy this one is a two line which I'm saying footer custom color footer font and header only to show you some we play with that also we can play with that so I have to create here near inside my folder CSS one file CSS main and I will put here and only for your information dot something test it means class it, it means CSS class okay if you put ID is a uh, is a ID so because in the HTML you can select in two type your tag because each HTML is a tag so each of these is a tag okay this is a D okay it's a nav a you can select or give the let's say CSS to this tag in two way one with CSS uh, one with class one with ID ID is specific in your page you should be unique ID is, it, it means identification should be unique but class can be many place you can put everywhere Many people like using ID, many people using the class, but I like using a class for CSS ID for selecting the object. Selecting the object in JavaScript or something else, you can say, okay, go to select that tag and make it vanish in my page, okay? Or doing the flashing or something else. Anyhow, <coughs> only to say, so this is a class. CSS okay I do back co uh, background color something and only to show you how it works background color when I'm writing if you use the CSS styling in the pie charm it gives you the help so it is good when you are developing at the this stage then you have to compile this file which I don't think so you do it but as you know if I open uh, a lot of CSS, these are, is a compiled one. It's compiled one, okay, and it's different. It's a very compressed. Anyway. Okay.
Okay. I bought. Sorry. Okay, I'll need to copy again this one. I lose it. Okay. Now, only we come back to the other point, which I told you. So I will like I would like to render this page and to see what's happening in this page. So I will run the page. Okay, only a stop and to see the debugging mode. Okay. I run the page. You can run any normal HTML also. It's not important if you don't have a CSS also. But for a moment, if I go to this page, I can see the header, the footer, but no content inside. If I put the content here, uh, okay. <laughs> Page. Okay, content here. Let's say H1. It means big header. Hello. I can see what's happening here. Okay. Hello comes here. Oh, of course, you know it. But what if I want to take this data and put in another page and use this one as a template of my page? layout of my page in everywhere and if i change my css and my menu my color everything it adds to everywhere in my page i mean my website so not one page so i will come here i will change what i do here is doing i'm saying extend from layout my page then i will come to say okay this is my block content I call content content okay and block content this one is a option if you don't want to put so I will put this part here uh-huh in the main that HTML then I will come here to see what's happening if I run of course I will not see because I am rendering the layout so in layout there is no data so I come also to change something in the I have to uncomment this part in the layout I am saying in the layout page I am saying the block my block content is starting from here to here so put my content here and I come to the app application, I will say main.html. So render my main.html, this one. So I will, I'm uh, rendering this one. But what I will see is the same page in the past. So in this case, I can extend everything here like a registration. registration so I can see what I call the registration link is register okay so here I will come to the app and I will say at sign app dot route okay app dot route you can say to route also reggie is okay or sign up okay define registration so here i need a form if you agree with me I need a form uh, anything else I need here but for a moment only I will return render template only the page registration okay and here I will delete this part I don't need HTML 
I will take exactly what I did in the registration and I will say please register in this page and if I go to the registration ah, I will see the error because it's not good okay usually takes time to save and anyway uh, this is a registration I can put my form in this page and uh, I can save the form and send the form to the database. But now what I need is creating the database. So here <laughs> I need a SQL alchemy, which I don't have it, I guess. No, I don't have it. So I need to go to the preferences to the Flask project. To, okay, in Windows, if, if I remember, is a Control Alt S together. Yes, correct. Works. Okay. In Mac, is a command. I don't know the specific. Uh, if you go here, you can find it. preferences. This one, I don't know what. Is. Anyway, you can go to the project. Then project interpreter. Then here, some of you you have here because my screen is small, so it make it here. Flask dash SQL alchemy, which is here. Okay. Then you can push install package. If you didn't uh, create the template, because I had it in the past, so <coughs> don't forget that part. You only create a simple, some text at the top, and that's it. If the most important part is this, this, this one now. So I install Flask, as you can see here. And also, uh, also, I need something else. Bcrypt, if you can write it, bcrypt. Okay. Bcrypt. Uh, Why is not here? Flask bcrypt, actually. Okay, it's this one. Flask bcrypt. I need it for generating the changing the pa plain password takes to something which no one can understand what is the password. The other one is the WTF4. WTF4, this one. So the previously was bcrypt. <coughs> Bcrypt is B C R Y P T. The other one is W T F. Okay, and the other one is School Alchemy. Okay. Uh, only if I forget WTF is installed. Yes. So we can avoid this part if you do OK. That's it. So now you have here the things. So from school alchemy, this one. Import Flask school alchemy. Import. Squirrel are coming. Also, we import also WTF in one time. So, flask underscore WTF import. <coughs> okay, import. What I have to import? Oh, okay, good. Flask form. 
then from WTF forms import my field which I need string field I need password field I need other things are submit submit I need and validator uh, okay Then I need to from uh, WTF dot validators import data required. I can use length, I can use email, and for moment is enough. So, also, it's better to import maybe. Okay, I will import later that one. Uh, lots of things are important. So, Bitrift and Session we can import later. Okay, I will stay here. If you are done, I can go to write the model. Here, we need to do two things, two important things. First, don't forget to put secret key, okay, as a country config otherwise it gives you error crf c error if you remember sec red underscore key you can put anything that you wish could be but something perfect then app dot config again SQL al chemi underscore okay data base underscore URI not URL URI ah sorry sorry So, um, then what you should write here is a SQLite. No, I write SQLite, correct? Then three slash, not two, three slash. Then name which you wish to call as a database website dot SQLite or DB. I like DB, so. Then, until now, you config your SQLite, you config the secret key for security reason, and now you can create your um, DB object, which is SQL Alchemy app from app. So that's it. What you can do here is you can separate this file to another file and do everything there, but I'm doing here, then we can see also I will do form in another page. I'm not doing in one shot everything because if you do in one page, you can lo you can follow the error. If you don't do it, you will have another problem, which is a priority to inclu include and call the function and the libraries. Okay, some of your friends has this problem. Okay, class uh, user which my user has, ah, okay, first as I have to do this, then I can say, okay, my table, ah, table, 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 name, equal, okay, now underscore, underscore, equal, like users, okay, 
or you can avoid this part also. I will avoid it, but we can, uh, no, I will not avoid it. I will put it. Why not? So the first one is a primary key, my primary key. So I have what? I will write. I am taking a pen. I will write, okay, this is my model. I have a users. I need ID. I need username. ID is a primary key. Username is a varchar or I don't know, a string. Uh, then password, then rule underscore ID. So I know what I'm doing. It's the same in the, only to find this one. Here, okay? Perfect. I come here, ID equal db dot column uh, db dot integer so integer is in you have to call integer for id then primary key db no no there is no db primary key equal you should say true, otherwise it's not going as an ID. Okay. True. Name. Name. Equal. DB dot. Column. DB dot name is name so you don't need to do something else only you need to put a string 64 and here you can say uh, what you can say nullable you can say nullable nullable it means I would like to have null data I mean null column or not if it's a null, I have to do this. If it's null, you should say true. If you can put null. If it's not null, you can put false. So it means you should put something in this data database. Okay? Otherwise it give you error. So then username equal db dot column then db dot string 64 again and this one I would like to have unique true then index true so I'm looking for the some username sometimes so I need to be indexed I'm query on that so the, the second is a password the third uh, it takes okay when you are query a lot on that specific column you need to do index because if you have a big database like thousand user the system the database can query on that but when he's qu doing query is slow because it's querying on the, there is no cache. But when you, you do index, the database creates some indexes on that specific table. When it wants to query on this specific column, it goes in that one. Not everything, only in that, those, those data. For doing search is very good. Like keyword, usually in the database, you, when you are writing keyword, Sometimes when you are posting something, you do keyword in your post, and the keyword goes to the index. This is way. So db dot column. Again, this one is a string. Then the string is a 928. Then unique, no unique, index, no index, nullable, should not be null, so false, nullable. I don't like to be uh, null my password that's it 
I have user table. I, what I can do is a function representing here okay so here I can say return is like a printing return in Flask okay return user <laughs> name a slash s it means printing s so here i will write self it means me dot what user that's it, it will return me user when i'm doing query or something at the beginning it sent return without any printing anything it returns me this one if it doesn't i don't write this it will not return nothing in the screen it's good for the command line it's not very specific for for the doing flask or something else okay class another class see i'm not writing anything about the relation until now i do rule I do the same db dot model. Then I do table name. If I am not writing correct, let me know. <laughs> so uh, rule. So here I say first id. So db dot column. This column should be db dot integer. Then primary key, yes, primary key, true. Perfect. Until now. Then name. Ah no. Name equal what is it? The same db dot column, but is a string. Okay. A string. Okay. A string, the size of a string is 65, no, 64, 65, anything is not important. But null, no. I don't like nullable for the reference. So I put false, so it's not null. Cannot be null. So index, uh, maybe yes. Index, yes. True. But of course, you have maybe 10 rules. So you don't need index now i can define representing define return what only one moment i do this and you can see both together i can return this rule rule name I can say root name is what self dot name okay then now I would like to create a relation one to too many what I should write first I will write here or there I mean the same but I will write I can say users equal so users equal db dot relationship then this one has relation between user which is this see i am specifying what what so then back now there is no back ref i have to write back ref equal back ref equal what rule so when i am defining something as a rule in the table of user i have to write rule equals something it means okay then i don't in the rule then i come to the class user class back roof back ref it means when i'm defining user uh, defining user with rule i have to write user name equals something password equals something and rule equals that 
or you can write what I am writing now here rule underscore ID or you can write ID or you can write object with rule not rule ID uh, I guess it's in the <coughs> slide I don't know I wrote in the slide or not no no I didn't write but here as example if you see rule uh, and this is a rule so now what I have to do here db dot column this is a normal column which has db dot uh, integer dot no not dot we go uh, then now I have to say db dot foreign key this is a foreign key the data is not uh, it's sh because when you don't write this one is not checking because the foreign key if it's a one and there is nothing here it should it sh should show you error and it does this uh, to what rules dot id I guess if this one, if we do rules, rules, it come. I do exactly what I'm doing here, so you will see rules. So this one is rules. I mean, I didn't write here, but it's rules. Rule, rule. So I'm doing exactly the same. So don't confuse the what I'm doing. Okay, now everything is fine. What I have to do now? Okay, I create a table, but I didn't create a database yet. So the example says, no, uh, the exercise says, please create a database to save the data, okay? So the second one, it says, create table <coughs> by using db.createAll and app.b4 first request. Now I will do, I will try to do without this, I can do also, but what time is it? Okay, I will try to see I, if I can. If I, there is no error, so okay. Now I am coming to the Python console. I will import. I will from app. I will import. You can avoid this part, actually. I will do here inside the code. Only I will show you, because some people ask me how it works. So you have to come to the Python console, not, not, no, not in terminal, and write Python. It's a different virtual environment. Python from app, which this page is, from app, import for me everything. See here, it imports rule, user, app, and DB. So I can say db dot create all for me. It creates for me the database here. One moment. Uh, I have to go to the, I guess, folder to see. It creates a website.db. If I remove it to see what's happening, I remove it. And I will do again. Okay? And I will come and I see here it created. Okay, I didn't do very magical things actually now. I it came, I mean, it's a little bit slow in PyCharm, but it's here also. I didn't do any magical things. I write on cdb.create all. So I import everything. I import everything. Okay. And uh, I create the database. So now I would like to see my database. You can do, and you can see here, and you can also 
do something else. You can use another application. It's called DB Browser, SQL, DB SQLite Browser. Go to the internet and write DB SQLite Browser or Browser SQLite. It's the same. Okay, you go in the website, this website, and you go to the download, and please download one of these applications which is compatible with your PC. You can use also the portable one without an installation. So, if you use this one, you can also see what you are saving in the database without going to the, to the terminal. You have two possibilities, going to the terminal, or going to, to this application. I will show you now the application. OK, I don't have open here, so DB browser. So I will put here. I will put here. Uh-huh. OK. So when I. Open the application, is appli this is application. Okay. And I can open the database part. I can go to my file, is here. And I can see what database I created. This is a database which I created. User, rules. So I, I suspect that I define user and rules. And I will come here. I have a, something here is not correct. Table name. Ah, uh -huh, OK. Guys, I put one more here. So because of that reason, it created user so now i will come here again i will remove my database so i will come again to my terminal and i will write create all okay i guess it will create again there previously we will check but it creates previously yes but um I, I will do something else now. I have to change the object. So I have to import again the. So I have to stop and restart again and import again all the object because I changed the object. So why is. Okay. Now is a table name is. Now should be correct. So I can remove it from here. And I can say create all. In this case, if I open it again, I can see users and rules. OK? So here I had a, a small mistake, which was three. So I changed. So anyway, anyhow, now what we want to do is not doing in terminal. I wish to do with the flask. What you should do? What you can do is coming to the flask application, come here, write app dot b for first request is a one decorator which it reserved from Flask, then you can write function <coughs> db all, let, no, not db all, you cannot use db all, uh, create db, then here you can write create db, no, not create db, D, uh, db dot create all, it creates all db, then you can define also something for rules, here you can say, OK. Now, 
I will not write here. I will write in another decorator. I will create the decorator to create uh, to put the new data on the database. So let's now. I don't have any database here. So when I have the new request to the date uh, to the server, which is. Uh, there is no home so it is a main where is the, when is there is a main the database is created that's it so you can do what you can do here and then you can write also after if you are doing the programming as a i mean development mode you can do like this after request and you can say def drop db and you can say db dot drop all <coughs> I don't like to do this now but you can if you do this after the first request I mean after the request it will delete all the database okay now we have there is the our page we have here the page and that's it only is better to create also decorator home here because I create a home route home that's it so also if I click here home it works so okay now but now I have a database but there is no data inside the database so what we did is we did until here perfect but I wish to have some data inside the database as a user rule so you can do two ways you can put on the before first request the rules a student teacher admin or other things etc but also you can create a new decorator which I would like to create a new de decorator for that so I do like this so I come here I will remove those I will say rule for creating only rule this is only for your, your because you, you can do also here but I would wish to do here so what you can do the uh, first you have to say rule underscore one is rule is name is name is student or you can say seller or something I don't know this student is better then you can say rule underscore two is what name equal teacher okay after that you can say db dot session okay db dot session then you can do two way in two ways you can write add <coughs> or you can write at all if you write at all it means you have to give with the list you have to give the list to the function or you can write dot add underscore all like this okay one two okay now then you have to say session dot commit so here you write in the paper here you write in the word without saving here you save on the database okay uh, it takes time to rule. 
I guess it's a rule. Is it rule or rules? Rule. Ah, index. Okay. My bad. You should not have the same function here, of course. Rule. Add, rule. Add underscore rule. Okay. Now to create a two rule in the database. So if you go to the database and you refresh, okay, I open it. If you open it, you can see a student and teacher is added in the table with the different ID. I can search through the this one and I can take the ID also. And that's it. So until now, you put also rule in the database. So what you need now is uh, creating the registration form also, of course. Because you have the table, you have a rule, you need a form, registration form, to put your all data on that form and do it uh, for, for registering the new user. So what it says in the third one, it says, okay, develop a registration page. This page will ask user data like name, username, and password. Then it should save data to the database. BigCrypt library should use for generating password from plain text. So you will not save the password you will not save the password plain password inside the database you will pa save the password in a way which no one understands it so we come here first things what you should do you know how to create it before so now I give you the time to create a form for me. Create a form by yourself now. I have form, so I can copy. So I give you time to create a form, which the form has name, username, password, and something. The same way which we did in last week. Also, the forms that exist in the GitHub, you can go and copy from there you don't remember what you should do. So now you have to create a form class. Anything that you wish, registration, anything would be. So one form class, which has name, username, password, and something field. So all of them are field. So one is a, a string. Two is the string, name and user. Then the password is the password field. So a string field, password field. The other one is copy, copy field. So it's not here. Okay. I will do it. But if you have any questions, ask.
let's continue. I hope you did it and you know how you should do it. So now let's let's start to do uh, now what I have I have the part so only please so I have it oh no it's better only copy this part because this part is new so only the different is only the different is I wish usually to create my model in another page so what I do here is a form like this I all my form will be here so I will put here so I have a form registration form with the name, username, password and register. What validator I have is I validate the data with data required on the back is a party on the back guys is a party or if it's a party we can join I can hear you here actually very clear and uh, the guy which has a cap, please. Okay, thank you. So, uh, here there is a data required for the username and you can also specify the minimum and maximum here. Me equal, I don't know, Four to eight, maximum ten, let's say, not eight, ten. So that's it. So you can import this form page inside your application. I am importing here because I wish to use this. Uh, object this model in the future in my my form so you should put after your model from forms import registration or you can put a star so it, it will import everything so now I have a form here which I can use it here form equal uh, okay registration form that's it so I can pass this form reg equal form here perfect so now I have access in the registration to this form you can do two things you can you can use the bootstrap what I'm doing now row then uh, each row okay I'm, I'm re remembering what I have to do actually div dividing actually I have another place but I would like to show you is uh, five mean I can do it the class the class column is a four okay you do three four it means because the column in the bootstrap there is a 12 so is a 12 the size is 12 all, all the things should be in the container then you can put uh, deep each row row then row then each row has, can can put the column so the column size maximum is at 12 so if you do column 4 4 4 and then you put the, your data in the middle you put the data and then in the middle so you can do it like that then you can 
put here D then you can say you want form uh, form dot reg dot name dot label here and this one can be form group class form group form group that's it uh, I don't know how it how, how it will look but we can see okay name came here and I wish to have also the okay form dot name that's it here as you can see so here also you can use class equal form group because I didn't use form group to that uh, form group okay and you can say uh, placeholder please write your user name so now as you can see here I wrote also I put the class to this exactly uh, we can see it f12 if push we give the class name to this group, form group, and also I wrote some placeholder. Before was not any placeholder. So you can play with this, let's say, uh, class with the bootstrap and you can mix these two uh, aspects together. So it depends on your, of course, template, but you can do. So I have a full, okay, here also, if you remember, last time I told you, you can, you can have four, okay, you can have something like this, four error in in form dot username dot error actually I did something wrong here this is not username is a name so I have to use name here so if something comes here and there is an error it can show the error and four that's it then you can put here the same danger that I show you in the past uh, I don't know where it's actually now, but we can find it. No? Ah, okay, it's here. Alert. This one. So, there is, I would like to put my error here. Okay? So, what you should do is you can take this class with a danger class. Let's see. You can copy completely actually and put here. And if there is some error, it will put the danger, let's say. We can do something else also here very better work actually okay cut and put here and put this one outside and if you can say if there is a on form reg dot username dot 
Oh, okay. You can keep like before. It's a very become very tricky. Okay, now I did for the form. So if I run the Okay, I'm not seeing the error. When error comes, it show it has to show. So I will copy it from here. From here to here, this is a name, label. So I will copy and I will paste it here for the username, 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 and username. Perfect. I should have now two. Ah, it's there. Why? Okay. Uh, why is this one is there? Okay. We should. Okay. This one, I'm removing this one. Again, I have some verb form group. Starting and ending the. Okay, I will copy the HTML. I have it. Now I cannot fix the HTML problem also. So from here to here, it's the same approach you have to go, but. So this one is cool. So, till here. Okay. Okay. This is the form. I will show you the same approach I went here. So, each each field should be inside the form group. See? And all of them are in the column. If you don't define column four, it will be automatically divided between the column. If you put 12 column, it will divide column one, 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 one. If you put three, it will uh, divide it to four, 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 four. I didn't define four, but you can define also without with four or without four, it's the same result. So everything is raw, again, is, as you can see, it's the same what I did in the past. Only I put the form, you should put inside the form, of course. Then, also don't forget the hidden tag. Then, if you push, you see the validation, it works. And if you push the data goes to the database, and demo, the method is not allowed. What, why? You know why? Method. In the, we have to define method here. Yes, get and post, exactly. So if I refresh, I, it shows me again the page because I'm not doing anything on the data. So, only to again, 
so why you sh what you should do here is form dot validate on submit then you can save data do everything here that you want rule you can take one rule from the database like a rule dot query dot filter underscore by then name equal student okay then you have to say first only one of course it's a one but the first one I want then you need to create a user underscore one and say user name so I'm not defining ID at all so it's a inside the form name dot data then uh, username dot okay form dot username dot data then you have to define passport form dot password dot data now you need a rule so you can say rule id equal rule underscore one dot id so then you can say db dot session dot not commit add db dot session dot dot commit okay now you save the data and you can do something you can redirect your page in somewhere else like a, you can define redirect and you can define here redirect okay return my page to redirect to to, to main home main something home so now i save the data i should save the data with this method we will see okay between 4 and 10 again so i will come here to increase the username 10 is not enough so 20. see it's easy to change the validation if you do by yourself with the javascript it's difficult so you change there and you see what's happening i suppose the data has to be saved because he, it redirects me to the home page. I go to check with the my SQL, I mean, SQLite browser, and I'm seeing here the password is a one, two, three, four, five is, uh, to zero. The username is this, and uh, name is this. The ID is a rule ID which is coming from rule is here so what if i would like not to show this password what i should do you should use the bcrypt password generator so you come here to generate the password with the bcrypt which i didn't import it yet so you can import from Flask bcrypt import bcrypt. So you come here, you say bcrypt. Okay, 
they create, you will give the application. Then it gives the application do a lot of things because it takes this one and do, I mean, does other things. So now you come here, you come this page, you say pass underscore one, anything that you want, you can wish to do. Then you can say b grip dot generate the password. You can say the for dot password dot data. That's it. So I am generating here. Then instead of this one, I will pass the password. Now what I do is registering again the page. I go to the registration. I do uh, like this. And I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero, nine. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is the second one registered, but the password is not the same. Here, the same, the same plain text I put. I define for the user, but it's the same. It's not the same. It's something that I don't know. It's good because if someone is uh, catch your database, they cannot reach to the user password. So another interesting thing maybe is to add the validation for your unique being unique. So now if I push register, what it should do? Do you think it should register or not? Guys, register username with the same username which is in the database is not permitted because the username is unique. So if I push, I see the error. What I should do for not seeing error and showing the user, please choose another username because this username is taken. So you come to the form, we import user, so from app, import user, then you come here, define one validator, not on submit, but on username, self, and take also username, you are returning username now. Then you have to look to the user on the server. User equal user dot query dot filter underscore by dot first. And here you have to say na username equal self dot username dot data okay now you come here you check if this user is exist return me validation error you should define validation error so validation error okay raise me not retain, raise me, validation error. You can define this username has been taken. Please choose another one. So this is has to be raised. So if you come back and you push it, it show you the error. This username has been taken. Please choose another user. So it goes to the database. It shows, okay, this user has been taken. Please choose another. And if you do more, it has to show you the error. It's the same error place. So I'm using the same one. Only one thing I want I will sh to show you 
Also, you can do here some cool things like self dot so you can return this username this has been taken so please choose another one so uh, So it says now uh, it's registered. Funny. So it says the Razi Vakiri has been taken. Please choose another one. So you can play with this. So we solve. We solve this until here to four. The remain is uh, using the login, so I give you this one as a practice at home because it's useful also for you. Please, please do the fifth month at home. And if you have any questions, you can ask the next session. So we finished four exercises. So we did a lot of things. You, you will use all these exercises in your work. I will upload the solution for to, uh, by tomorrow afternoon. And um, that's it. Oh, oh, and if you have any questions, you can come to me now because we have 10 minutes, so I can, can do it. So thank you so much and see you in the next session.